We're back at it again, folks. This week we have Witch's Brew. For those of you that live in the Michigan area, I highly recommend it. You may also be able to get it um, in different states if they carry wine from Michigan. It's a spiced red and is only available around fall winter. They also have an apple flavor, which I quite like, as well as a pumpkin flavor, which is disgusting. So love is blind. Oh my God. We started off season six last week. If you have not seen that video, you should watch that video first because you may be quite confused. And also uh, if you wanted to commiserate about the first six episodes, you can do that there. However, I have been sitting here for the last few hours watching episode seven through nine. I've been doing my nails. I don't know, I guess I would call it Harajuku Kitch. Uh, Gyaru girls that you wonder if they can wipe their own booty hole. I, I don't wonder why people get upset like I've seen women who have like really long nails get upset when people ask like, how do you wipe your ass? And I feel like that's a fair question. But to answer the question, you wrap it around the hand and then you go up so it doesn't get in your nails. You're welcome. I don't know why they get so offended by that. Do you have boo-boo hands? You might have boo-boo hands. Anyway, so yeah, seven through nine. I don't know what's going on. I'll just, <laughs> I'm just gonna start off by saying that. I don't know what's going on. A bunch of like seemingly very important things are happening off screen. I don't know if it's editing. I'm gonna talk you through it. A few things though, before we get started, two uh, points of note that I would like to uh, correct from last week. One, I didn't mention Chelsea in the notable cast. That was not on purpose. That was an accident. I forgot she was there because everyone looks alike. <laughs> With that said, I didn't really have any strong opinions about her last time anyway. So I do have more things to say about her now. Also, for a bunch of people who were like roasting her on saying she looks like Megan Fox, I would like I would like to implore you guys to return to that uh, clip. I don't, if I recall correctly, it was her saying, people say that I look like Megan Fox. And I think it's just because I have light eyes and dark hair. And people were like, you don't look like Megan Fox. She said she doesn't agree with it. <laughs> but also I do kind of see it. Again, I said that last week, like depending on the angles, I kind of get it. Particularly before she had more stuff done to her face, Megan Fox. So there's that. It was not on purpose that I skipped Chelsea. My bad. Two, bean dip. <laughs> Apparently it's not a racial term. Cause I was like, what is that? Why you go up to the black girl and call her bean dip? So, <laughs> and apparently I wasn't the only one that was like, what the fuck is that? Apparently it is a, like a term. It basically when someone jokingly taps somebody's titty, smacks someone's titty, still weird because there was a big issue with people like hypersexualizing AD, uh, and that just made me feel very, very icky. Still weird, but not necessarily racist. <laughs> okay, is there anything else before we jump into things? Bills, okay, send it over to Admiral Kenny. <laughs> Hello, it's Admiral Kenny. And today's video is sponsored by our friends over at HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit delivery service that offers you fresh, delicious, healthy meals delivered straight to the comfort of your own home. Pre-portioned, pre-thought out, pre-shopped for, so you don't even have to go to the grocery store if you don't want to, and Lord knows I, Never want to. <laughs> it's a great way to become a better cook. Great way to get out of recipe ruts. Try something new. Try something that surprises you. Find a new favorite recipe for you. I love anything with stir fries, anything with soups. Their soups are fire. I will eat anything on a bed of rice. Tastes good, I don't know what you want me to say. Find a new favorite recipe, or you can add on proteins or their breakfast. They have breakfast that's actually really good. They're like pre-made, so all you have to do is like heat them up. I highly recommend the like egg bite thingies. Speaking of which, if you would like to try out their breakfast, you can get free breakfast with HelloFresh. If you use my code KennyFree at HelloFresh.com and you can get free breakfast for life. Again, if you go to HelloFresh.com, use code KennyFree, you can get Free breakfast for life, that is one breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. So big thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. All right, so we're gonna start off with episode seven. The last we seen of everyone, Chelsea and Jamie were arguing because she felt uncomfortable about him being very complimentary to AD. He was like her eyes kind of fawning over her and then kind of left her alone after saying that AD was stacked. I think there's two ways to see this. I think you could see it as her being very insecure. There's definitely some truth to that. We will see a lot of that particular side of her in these episodes and then there's also just me personally as a viewer who's watching something edited and curated by the devil Netflix I don't think he's really into her 
that's just me. So I think, yes, she's insecure, but she's not necessarily wrong. <laughs> and it doesn't help if you see him like seemingly fawning over somebody else's body. I was getting a little frustrated because I was seeing people online kind of criticizing AD. What did she do? She showed no interest, in, as I understood it, for uh, Bart, <laughs> Jimmy. Um, <laughs> I think y'all are just insecure as well. I think y'all some haters. Y'all ain't never seen a pretty girl before talk to human beings. Y'all are weird. Um, is this the effect I have of it? Uh, they make up. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Ch uh, Chelsea and Jimmy make up. She's like, I just feel like emotional. And he's like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel insecure. And she's like, well, okay. We then see Kenneth and Brittany. They're still having a conversation about race. Again, if you recall the last episode, he had spoken with AD as well about is Brittany kind of aware of what it would be like to raise black children? Like, has she thought about that? You know, that's something she needs to ask herself if she's ready for. And I don't know what it was about this conversation that was so uncomfortable and awkward for me, but I get why it's awkward because she's white and she has no idea what she's talking about. It came off to me as white girl who's dating a black dude. So did like a quick research on like what are like key things <laughs> to think about when dating a black man. And then she just kind of says random words that are so weird to me, like, like, like phrases that I wonder, does she fully know what they mean? Kenneth identifies as a black male. That's not how that works. <laughs> It's not, it's not like a, like a gender expression. I think she kind of thinks of it as like a gender expression. You know, despite her like awkward clobbering around the topic, she does admit uh, as she should, that there's just things that she doesn't understand as a white woman. I've heard your kind of concerns around that. What would you need from me to feel that we are good? Like, you don't have to worry about that. Like, what is it that you need from me for that? Which is a very good question. And he says, you know, just as we go through life, just as things come up, that's where we will learn like how you handle those things, what your strengths, what your weaknesses are. Laura and Jeremy, who, if you recall, last we heard they were in an argument because she was mad that he went to AD and Clay and told them about bean dip. Cause <laughs> She told Jeremy, jokingly in private, you should go up to AD and bean dip her. And then she was like, why did you tell her that? It was a joke. Why did you run and tell her that? And it became this big old thing when it wasn't even supposed to be that big old thing. My, my nails are clacking. They end up like talking it out. And this conversation is very weird because I don't like either of them at the end of this conversation. I feel like she completely did not acknowledge that that was just a weird thing to say and a weird thing to do, even if it were just a joke. Telling your husband or husband-to-be to go up to a random woman and flick her titty, very weird. And I don't like him either because he seems to be defensive, like a almost aggressive, not quite, but just on the edge of aggressive while saying he's sorry. So he's kind of like, yeah, you know, I messed up. I was dumb. I shouldn't did it. Because you didn't deserve the silent treatment that you got last night. And, yeah. I, and I know that's not the way to handle shit. And I knew that and I still did it and it was wrong. And all I can do is just fix it. Okay. Because also apparently they were frustrated because, because they didn't talk it out. He just slept on the couch and she slept in the bedroom, I wanted to have a conversation and he just shut down. He didn't want to have a conversation with me. So I don't know if he's like frustrated with himself about how he handled things. I don't know if he's frustrated with her. I don't know. Also the editing's weird because the editing is always weird. At the end of the conversation, they seem to have an understanding better than I understood it. Um, <laughs> I did see one uh, comment, again, I watched this during a live stream where someone uh, encapsulated it perfectly. So I'll uh, clip that somewhere. Johnny and Amy are still cute as shit. Not much to say at this point, but they do talk about how they wish they would have a fight soon because it feels almost too good to be true. Or not even that. It feels like they don't know how the other person shows up in a fight. We don't quite know real life triggers yet. And we wanna know what are you like when you're in that space? So I do get where they're coming from. They're like, it's almost too so good that we don't know what to consider. <laughs> like back with Kenneth and Brittany and things are very, very, very awkward. Again, at first I thought it was just editing just because they wanted something to spice things up, but no, they're very awkward my garden turned off. <laughs> they go long bouts of time 
without talking to each other. Things are a bit awkward. And at first I was like, do they, is it really that they're that awkward? Or maybe he just likes pleasant silence. I like pleasant silence because sometimes you just don't want to talk all the time. There seems to still be some lingering awkwardness and she's kind of overthinking it. Maybe not overthinking it, maybe thinking about it just the appropriate amount. I was starting to wonder, again, this is the couple that doesn't want to have sex before marriage. They're the Jesus couples. And I was wondering if this awkwardness is due to maybe some sexual tension because they don't want to overstep a boundary. And so they're like having trouble kind of navigating that, like how to be physical, but non-sexual, like how to show affection, but not cross a line. And so maybe one or both of them are kind of like cutting it off before it could get that far. At this point, all we know is things are getting awkward and they're trying to figure out why that is and what they can do about it. A, D, and Clay. I said in the last part, very quickly, I don't like this. I still don't like this. I hope we're clear on that. He gives me so many icks all the time in so many different ways. To hear more about what my initial thoughts on him, that would be the last video. At some point he's asking her about her time dancing as a cheerleader for the Patriots when they were doing very well. And she was there during two of their Super Bowl wins. He says something along the lines of like, we would be iconic. Later they show that he was a big sports guy. He ran track and field. He was a basketball player, I think in college. Maybe that's what he meant. Like, oh, two sportsy people, you know, whatever. But the way it comes off, as I think most people would think, is that, oh, we look so good together. Again, no importance on any like substantive personality traits, values that matter to each other. A lot of what he seems to focus on are how they appear to others. And that's about it. We also find out that he's Afro-Guyanese. Again, non don't engage. I, <laughs> and since non aren't engaging, I'm not going to explain myself. All I'm gonna say is, that makes sense. <laughs> and non I don't wanna hear your opinion on that. Especially women, y'all know that explains a lot. And that's all I'm gonna say. They are also feeling kinda awkward. <laughs> you can see her face and it feels like you're watching her get the ick in real time. It's such a visceral <laughs> reaction. Like her eyes, she went. <laughs> but at this point, to me, it looks like she's completely checked out. This is the face of me when I've completely checked out. But she asks him, what are you thinking? Like, what's going on in your head? Ugh. And this, my friends, is where we have the ain't shit conversation of them all. The I don't want to let you down conversation. Old faithful. I don't want to let you down, says a who is definitely going to let you down. And if you recall last week, I said he gives me cheater energy. Well... Um, he says, <laughs> but I'm triggered cause I'm like, oh, I don't want to let you down. Says a man that'll let you down in a way you didn't even expect or one that you might have. She's like, things have gotten weird all of a sudden. We were having dinner or lunch or whatever. And then all of a sudden you're like, I don't want to let you down. Like, where did that come from? And he's like, I'm just over here overthinking about marriage and breaking up. You know, marriage is hard and my parents broke up and like, I just have a lot of anxiety around that. If I didn't have so many other indications, like visceral indications that this man ain't shit, maybe I would give it a little bit more grace, but I do not. So they end up having another one of those couples events at which AD, Chelsea and Jimmy seem to be in a good place now. AD's wearing a very cute swimsuit. That's a beautiful color. Jimmy and Jeremy apologize to AD because she ended up in two other couples bullshit because she's hot. Like while she's talking with Jeremy, uh, he actually brings up how Clay has a type of personality where he'll just be having a good time and then shut down. And this is really affirming to her because she thought it was her, like something she did that made him react that way. But he was like, nah, that's just how he was. That's how he was in the men's quarters. That actually makes me feel more assured of us. So thank you for telling me that. But yeah, everyone's just talking to everyone. You know, they're friends at this point. They all know each other pretty well, but there ends up being a conversation between Amy and Jeremy in which he starts to talk a lot about Sarah Ann. If you recall, Sarah Ann was the other girl that he considered between Laura, his current fiance and Sarah. He considered her as well, but told her bye-bye. Uh, the one that was a self-proclaimed conservative patriot. Not a fan of her, but he's still considering it. Everything I said about last week, still right. But he seems to really feel the need to say like, you know, I, had a great connection with her. I could be friends with her outside of the pods. No, no, you cannot. If you recall, she wasn't just a person in the pods. She was the person that you considered picking that you in the pods said you had nothing but a sexual 
connection with. Y'all ain't got shit to talk about. Is that, am I wrong? Amy and Johnny talk about how she's very close with her parents and that she wouldn't feel comfortable getting married without her father's blessing. And that's basically where the shenanigans, the drama ends for the honeymoon. And now we're on our way back to Charlotte. And this is the part of the experience, as you all may be aware, where they move in together, try to organize their work schedules, organize their finances, living situation, figure out who lives with who, like who's moving in with who. They also get their phones back. And this season, perhaps more than any other, that seems to be a big issue. So strap in, baby, we're going on a ride. I was in Kroger and foolishly thought this was real crab for $10. <laughs> I'm an idiot, but it's good. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's, it's, you know, it does the job. And the first thing we notice as far as the phone thing is that Kenneth is particularly engrossed by it. More so again than I think we've ever seen on camera. Uh, she's like unpacking, she's really excited uh, to move into this space together. And he is like completely 100% attention on his phone. Now, as someone that works from home and has a lot of their work on their phone, I completely get that if you haven't had your phone for a while, I would be freaked out as well. It does say something that he seems to be completely distant from her as she's really excited to begin this new chapter of their relationship. They're moving in together. And he's just kind of like, yeah, yeah, whatever, I don't care. Back to Clay and AD. I would just like to say that I should charge for being psychic because I'm right too often. Here, we have a conversation between them in which he brings up his father was a big cheater. It had made him not believe that men, particularly black men, be faithful. As good of a father as his father was, he would still bring him, Clay, on his cheating trips. <laughs> Something that his mom doesn't know to this day. Well, she's about to find out today, baby, ooh. I mean, she knew he was a cheater, they divorced, so I assume that's why. But yeah, he's like, I've never seen a black marriage where they stay faithful, even in like Will and Jada and, and like other black prolific couples, they also don't stay faithful. And, the, and so he has this constant fear, it's not funny, he has this constant fear that he won't be able to be faithful to one person. Now, this were me, I can only talk about me. This would be the conversation that we don't recover from. And if, for whatever reason, you have to stay on the show, I know there's like some contractual stuff that you might have to stay on the show. This would be the conversation where I have checked out, <laughs> like completely. There's no coming back, there's no returning from this. Absolutely not, I'm out. Her face does not read that. If anything, she looks more intrigued than she did at the conversation, at the, at the lunch they had the other day when I thought she was getting the ick. That's not good. That's not good. You shouldn't be more attracted to him because he said he doesn't know if he won't cheat on you. Oh my God, run, run, bitch, I don't, what is happening? He's all like, oh yeah, I want us to go to therapy before we get married. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. He's like, I know you're my person. Goes into this whole like, thank you for making me a better person. Oh, getting triggered. <laughs> and he's like, I have my demons. And, <laughs> and again, her dumb ass looking at him like, I can fix him fighting demons and it's monogamy. <laughs> Here's the thing that pisses me off. I just gotta go on this diatribe because I never understand why men who say this or feel this way or think this way don't just say, why don't I just not get married? Why don't I just, you know, not even get in a serious relationship? There's no, I know people feel like social pressures and shit, but there's no necessity. You don't die <laughs> if you don't enter in a monogamous relationship. People are ethical non-monogamous all over the place. And in that way, you can communicate and date people who feel the same way, but they never wanna date them people. They wanna date people who just want you to be monogamous. Why? Why? Because if you say shit like that to me, it reads as I enjoy cheating because there's ways to not do it. And he's like, oh, I just, I need therapy. I have so many problems. Yes, you do. But again, she's sitting there like, I can fix them with my love. My pussy is therapy. Episode eight. This episode starts with a couple seeing each other's places for the first time. They also meet a few important people along the way. Also figuring out some logistics, like who will live with who and all that stuff. First thing I noticed, people in North Carolina can afford houses, like nice houses. Unfortunately, in Michigan, ain't no way in f 
rights are very expensive. <laughs> That's how I feel whenever I see real estate in Texas. I'm like, oh, if I didn't want to have reproductive rights, man, I'd be in that bitch tomorrow. We go to Jeremy's house and in the pods, he was all about like, he's immaculate. He's a very clean guy. And so when they get to his house and find out that not only is he very clean, he's so clean to the extent that it looks staged. <laughs> he's one of those people that have all the labels turned to the front in his refrigerator. It's very like serial killer, which is what uh, she says. She's like, it's very serial killer clean, but in a good way. I like it. She's also a neat freak. She's just a nitpicky person in general, but there are, but one of the pros of being a nitpicky person is that she tend to pick up on things. Remember, if you recall last week, I said Jeremy is a fucking liar. So I wouldn't be surprised if this ain't even his house, but that's neither here nor there. Back to Ken and Brittany and they're having a lot of these awkward moments again. And she's trying to figure out, is he actually distant? Or like, is it all in my head? And whenever she seems to bring up her concerns about this this feeling of distance she feels, he kind of turns it into like, I don't have a big personality all the time. So if I'm not gonna show up peppy and happy all the time, is that gonna be an issue for you? Are you gonna start questioning our relationship because I can't show up and be peppy and happy all the time? And I'm like, that's not what she said. There's no connectiveness between us. They're essentially roommates and not even friendly roommates, at least what we see on camera. He's not engaged in conversation, seemingly in the process anymore. One of her concerns is like, there's not a lot of physical touch, like no holding, no hand holding. He barely kisses me, like something's off. Chelsea ends up seeing her friends who come over to meet um, Jimmy who has to work upstairs because he works from home and he'll come down later. But they're chatting um, and she talks about Trevor who she turned down for some reason. She talks about that, like going between two people and she's like, he was very sure about me, but like, I just love Jimmy. They asked like what it was like meeting him. She says she hasn't met him yet because she hasn't. Talk about how Jimmy is also not necessarily as affectionate as she would like. She's like, he hasn't kissed me today. Apparently off camera, he had seen Jessica's photo. This would be the first time he's ever seen Jessica. He had no idea what she looked like before because they were in the pots. If you recall, Jessica was the one that when they were breaking up, she was like, when you see me, you're gonna choke. She was the one with the kid, if you remember, right? Right now, Chelsea's feeling like, is he kind of distant and weird because he saw Jessica and she's like overthinking it. She's like, wait, does he feel differently? Like, I don't know. I know he loves me and I'm not gonna worry about it, but just like, I feel weird. I feel uncomfy. But eventually he comes down, he meets her friends. It's like a very warm process. I will say, this particular conversation and how he frames it, again, according to editing, who knows how it actually went down in the actual conversation, but according to editing, he said something very strange to me. It's strange to listen to. He basically frames the Chelsea, Jessica, love triangle thing. There was another girl that he had a connection with and that ended badly. Chelsea was there to pick me up and that's when I fell for her. One girl, she was the only person I was really, really considering and I had strong feelings about her and it, it ended poorly. And I, I went in there with her and she could tell by my tone of voice I was sad from how the last day ended and she just picked me up and like- She does that. That's an interesting way to word that because how it felt to me is that you were just better off with me and that's why you were breaking up with her. But that's not how that happened. It was that y'all had an argument because she was like, I need you to be direct. Jessica was like, I need you to be direct. I need you to say how you feel. I feel like you don't like me as much as I like you. And I have a problem with that. And if you don't, then what's going on? We don't need to do this. I'm, I don't want to feel like I'm chasing you. And so, because he's like, uh, then okay, bye, that ended badly. So I'll just go with this other girl. Uh, but she's like, yeah, the story, whatever. And Chelsea, <laughs> this is funny. She's like, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> like Hulk Hogan. And he kind of says that he hates when she does that. She's also done it during sex. People were acting like it was so strange. Like what? She said, yeah, brother, <laughs> during sex. And, and like, oh my God, what a weirdo. And he's like, I don't want to have sex. And the girl that I love, the woman that I love is like, yeah, calling me brother. <laughs> Y'all are no fun. <laughs> Y'all are no fun. <laughs> Y'all ain't never dump nobody up after getting bust down. Sex is a team sport and also a competition. You're both on the same team and also 
fighting award, a competition, a, a fight for the final pin. <laughs> like, like I've smacked on the ass afterward. Like, good game. You had me in the first half. Amy and Johnny talk about finances, and apparently he's more of a saver, frugal guy, and she's more live in the present. I hate that energy, but I know a lot of people who have it. Uh, me personally, y'all scare me. People that spend every dime they get and they don't have to. It's not like you're living paycheck to paycheck. You just spend all your shit. Y'all are confusing to me. I don't know. <laughs> they also get to talking about they are having an issue deciding what to do in regards to contraception. They have yet to have sex because she is averse to to birth control for whatever reason. And they've decided to not have sex for the time being because they don't wanna accidentally get pregnant. I was very, very, very confused by this entire conversation <laughs> um, because one, they never speak as if condoms are an option. Not that I would know as a virgin, but uh, skin condoms, you can barely feel them. Also, they don't talk as if like abortion is something they would be cool with. I believe in a right to choose. If you choose to have a baby that you're not ready for, I sure. Um, if you can even get an abortion in North Carolina now, probably not. Thanks, Supreme Court. I daily pray that one day Clarence Thomas has a heart attack while taking a shit. I want him to die in the most like humiliating way possible. Full on Elvis mode. <laughs> Kim, <laughs> Clarence Thomas, Uncle Ruckus ass bitch. Is that who they made Uncle Ruckus after? Cause they do look alike. I'm sorry, I got so distracted. Um. Anyway, she is averse to birth control for whatever reason and I, Get it? Because hormonal birth control is a lot. It can make you gain a lot of weight. It can mess with your mental health. I knew friends that were suddenly idle after they changed the birth control. It can, me it can mess with your skin. It can mess with uh, your cycle, particularly. I had a friend nearly die of a pulmonary embolism <laughs> because of her birth control. So me personally, I've always been, I'm, I won't do the hormonal method, thank you. So I get where she's coming from. Plots are another thing that can happen with hormonal birth control. She talks about how her gynecologist said it may help with her anemia, which leads me to believe that perhaps she has a heavy flow. I'm not a doctor, I'm just guessing. That would lead me to believe that that's probably why she can't do a non-hormonal option. If you have a Paragard, like a copper IUD, the one that's non-hormonal, it increases your flow. So people that already have like low iron are not recommended to get it. But again, they don't speak as if uh, condoms exist. Um, she's like, well, you could also get a vasectomy. We need to figure something out. So back to Ken and Brittany, they are still doing this. They're, st they're still doing this awkward thing. She brings it up again and she's like, I don't feel from us that like that craving each other that I would hope to have to someone that I'm about to marry. He's like, you don't because I feel that. So you're not speaking for me. When I tried to kiss you, you pushed away. Mind you, he tried to kiss her in the middle of the night. She was sleeping. I don't appreciate this, but he basically says like, again, this could be editing. Maybe, maybe it does make sense for him to respond this way. But based off of the information we have, it comes off very gaslighting. The conversation she's basically asking for affection from him and she can't see them getting married without that affection from him. He turns it into, well, if I'm not affectionate every day, are you gonna question the status of our relationship? And I find it really concerning that you don't crave me because if you don't crave me, then what are we doing? She gets emotional. She's like, I just wanna feel like what we felt in the pause and outside of it, we have no tension. And what she means by tension is like sexual tension. She's like, I know that we decided that we're gonna not have sex until marriage, but it's not even like an issue. <laughs> it's, not, it's not something we're like, oh, I wish I could, I wish I could rip your clothes off. It's, there's nothing, there's no passion. He's so distant. And so he's like, okay, well, if you don't crave me, then this ain't gonna work. And they break up. <laughs> or more like he breaks up with her. Cause she's just like, like kind of like, what the fuck? If you don't feel passionately for me, I can't force it. You know, I believe that God's gonna show up in ways that matter. You know, I don't need to force anything. Like if you don't feel it, then you don't feel it. Again, I would, I, I understand that. Like I, I get what he's saying in that re respect, but like it was quick as fuck he got to that conclusion. There was no, she's like crying and he's like on his phone. It didn't seem like a hard thing for him to leave the relationship. He's like, okay, well, you know, let's hug it out. So we know there's no beef. You're engaged. Well, you were engaged. Again, you acting like she a roommate, I think. And also because we don't have a lot more information. So I can only assume that this had something to do with it. He's not attracted to her. 
because she's white. Kind of took the first opportunity to be like, okay, then well, peace. <laughs> it's just, it's not a great way to handle it. But I am happy they broke up because y'all don't need to be together. It's obviously a mess. But yeah, she's crying. He don't comfort her at all. He just goes upstairs and like goes to a friend's house, I guess. Back to Chelsea and James, Jimmy whatever his name is. They talk about him being a bit withdrawn. She believes it's because he saw the picture of Jessica. Get the story of how he saw the picture of Jessica. It was Jeremy. Jeremy and Laura, two nosy, nosy bitches, two messy bitches. I see how they got together. Jeremy was like, have you seen Jessica? She's a knockout. She looks like a Kardashian. And then he sends it to Jimmy. He was like, I didn't feel like sorry about my decision or anything. Like I just, I saw it. <laughs> like that's what I saw it. And Chelsea, who again, I feel is innately insecure, but also doesn't help that sometimes maybe he isn't quite as affirming as she needs. She's like, I need reassurance from you. I need to hear you say you love me. I need you to kiss me. You haven't kissed me at all today. And it's like, I could get how that would be very annoying to have you saying like all the time, like counting the number of times I kissed you today. <laughs> like I would, that would just be exhausting. Or how many times I said, I love you today. Like it's a, it's a lot. So I get it. However, comma, if you're trying to stay together, you probably shouldn't call her clingy, which Jimmy does. <laughs> Ayo, yikes. Don't, like, that's not, I laugh doubly hard though, cause that's definitely how that conversation would go with me because I don't even know like what you want me to say. Like, please, I don't have the capacity to reassure you as much as apparently you need. I can't do that. Oh my God. I can't sit here and, and count every time I say I love you, which is what I got, which, which is what I understood with Kenneth. Like when he was saying that, like I get it, but there is some truth to this. There's some truth to this. Like you, at least from what we see, you don't engage with her. But Jimmy, we see him like engaging with her, you know, like giving her hugs, giving her kisses, blah, 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 blah. You know, he just met her friends. So like, what are you talking about? <laughs> the word clinging really triggered her. Again, I can't really say he's wrong, but it's, it's a trigger, obviously. This becomes a conversation or an argument, she starts crying. She's like, you call me clingy? She then claims that he started problems, which again, from what we see on camera, no, that's you, you were just digging for shit. And then whatever happened, you blame that on him seeing her picture, Jessica's picture. I cooked I'm, you dinner, I'm I stayed thankful by you myself. Me I'm then thankful. I sat and watched your fucking show with you. And you say I'm too clingy, and then went upstairs and I had sex with you? And I'm too clingy? Well, okay. if you're gonna bring up the sex, you're the one that wanted to have sex. Yeah, I also did. Also, maybe wanted a little breather from that too. <laughs> She's like, wow, that's crazy. She's crying and he's like, I need space. So he goes back to his apartment for the night. <sighs> so the episode ends with us seeing Jessica. Ugh. And she meets up with Laura. Ugh. They meet up for drinks. And during this conversation, we learned that Jimmy had actually sent her a friend request, Jessica, a friend request. And she like freaked out. She was like, oh my God. And then didn't immediately accept it. And when she went to come to consider, I guess, accepting it, he withdrew the request and made his account private. That's a little more than just seeing her picture. I don't know, benefit of the doubt. Maybe he added her as a friend and was like, eh, maybe that's a bad look, Never mind, And then deleted it. I don't know, but I noted it, putting it in the back pocket with Laura and Jeremy, Sarah Ann, the girl that he was choosing between the two, had DM'd him, basically starting off real cordial, like, hey, I had a great time getting to know you. I hope you're doing well, blah, blah, blah. So it's all well and good at first. But as it keeps going, it turns into essentially, if she don't treat you right, you can get this pussy. She don't say those words verbatim. That's the, that's the spirit of what she was saying. She don't treat you right, um, you can get this meow meow. Meow meow kitty, purr, you know. If she don't treat you right, you can get this pro-life puss. So fucking funny, oh my God. She says, Laura says that she found out about this because Jeremy had come to her, was forthcoming like, do you see what she sent me? That's crazy. It could be my trauma. <laughs> but anytime I've ever dated a that needed to tell me that other women wanted him, not a great sign. I don't need to be involved in this. I could have seen that and you could have responded to her very cordially and shut it down. You wanted me to see it, put that in my back pocket. It's another thing I'm gonna put in my, it's another thing I'm a little, mm. 
put it in my back pocket. Instead, instead of responding though, he just likes it, which I thought it was funny. Like, like you're saying, hey, you want this pussy? And instead of like engaging with it, he's just like, like, <laughs> so anyway, that's funny. That's a lot of nerve to know he's engaged, to know who he's engaged to. And instead of like acknowledging that and going forth with that, she's like, if you want some pussy, you can get it. Jessica ends up talking more about Jeremy during this conversation. I mean, apparently she had done her own digging and found that Jeremy's exes, a lot of them look like her. And she's like, if he saw me, he, you know, do you think he would regret going with her and blah, 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 and it just, if I were to see Jimmy again, it's gonna be like dangling temptation, like right in front of his face. Do you think that he would wanna see me? I was reading for you, girl. You're giving low vibrational bitch. You're giving side hoe. And in a post interview, she's like, if he saw me, basically he would wanna f Don't look at me like that. You know it's true. You know it's true. And it's like, yeah, but you, no more competing over men either. They're not worth it. Episode nine. Let's just get more wine. I have the apple one as well. I don't think I said this before. The brand is Leelanau Cellars, as in Leelanau, Michigan. They have a lot of breweries and wineries up there. I want to take a trip there, get an Airbnb and get very drunk. French trip, let's go. It's been in there a little while. It tastes more alcoholic. Does wine go bad if you've opened it? No, right? So it's 18 days before the wedding. Yeah. I tell y'all my dog don't love me. I saw a video of a Yorkie that likes to snuggle all the time. My dog don't like me. It's 18 days before the wedding. We are now down one couple. One couple has not made it, Kenneth and Brittany. And we might be down a second because if we just had Jimmy and Chelsea arguing, but apparently they have come back together. He kisses her on the cheek and they're good now. They talk it out, blah, blah, blah. Both acknowledge that they have things to work on. She's very insecure and he's sketchy as Laura and Jeremy meet her parents. Also her brother and his wife come. While they're all together, I'm sure production makes them do this because this happens so often on the show. She brings up some sensitive ass information and this is the DM thing with Sarah. So he kind of says like, oh, I saw it. And I was like, wow, this is so funny. Let me go show Laura this because you know, I didn't have anything to hide. So, okay. And then she, Laura starts to talk about the little nitpicky things that she really hates about Jeremy. Honestly, she doesn't really say much about what she likes about Jeremy. It feels like all of her compliments, you just have to assume she really likes you. She has like a lot of maybe Cinderella energy. She says she picked him because she uh, made a pros and cons. <laughs> list and the pros were like family and values and and politics and important things that they feel in life and the cons were he wore hawaiian shirts but she really hates the hawaiian shirts apparently <laughs> but later the mom is talking to her and she's like i don't y'all don't really talk to each other sweetly like nicely like there's a joke that jeremy says that uh she wakes up every morning and she's like i hate you <laughs> and goes about her day which is very funny especially because her family laughs because they could see her doing something like that. She's just like me for real. I would, some of us are avoidant, all right? Some of us bitches are avoidant. Is it healthy? No. It, it would explain a lot of Laura's tendencies to like nitpick. She nitpicks about a lot of stupid shit. Around this time though, I start to notice that we haven't seen AD and Clay for a while, like what's going on with them? And just then we see them going in to meet, uh, 80's going in to meet his mom and sister. Sister, first impression, love her style. She seems very cool. I love the hair, I love the glasses. She's nice. However, come during this conversation, we learn again off camera because where the f have the cameras been? They haven't been there for crucial moments, for crucial conversations. It's a bunch of shit happening off camera, but off camera, they've been having an issue with Clay not coming home. He was shocked by that. He blames it on his work schedule and like sometimes he'll stay out overnight because it's convenient for him given like where he's working. I don't know what he does. I don't know if it's because they haven't told us or because they've kept it very vague like he does business. I don't know what this man does. For some reason he has to stay out all night and sometimes he'll stay out, come back at God knows what time in the morning. And so AD starts to articulate how that's a problem 
because it is a problem. One, where are you? Two, we don't spend any time together. Maybe that's why they have no footage of them. Again, I feel like she's like checked out or she should have checked out. I don't know if she checked out with the like, I've never seen a, a healthy relationship before. I would have, you know, you're turning me into a better person. Like, no the f I'm not, that is not my job. There are people that get paid to do that, to listen to your problems and give you advice and coping skills. I don't. And the sheer fact that you expect me to do that is wild. But anyway, she starts to talk about, you know, how that's an issue. Of course, I don't have a problem with you working. I need to spend time with you. I need to see you. But his response to that is to say, so what's the problem? Which is a little bit too much spice. Work is not the problem. Work has never been the problem, ever. So what's the problem? Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Not only is it a whoa for you to even say it like that, watch your tone, but two, we're in front of your mom and sister. This is the first time I'm meeting your family and you're trying to argue with me in front of them. That is so, ugh, that, that shows that you have no consideration of context or decorum. You understand that this is me meeting your family for the first time and you wanna argue with me about whether or not you should be coming home. That's wild. The mom, who again was married to a cheater, for a very long time, you know, I'm divorced, but I do recognize, I do understand that, you know, there's things you have to do for work, blah, 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 blah. But if it's someone you care about, you make time for it. And that's just true. That's just how that is. When you care about something, you make time for it. If you don't have time for it, other things fall by the wayside. Things that should be less important, you should not be juggling all of it if you think the relationship is a high enough priority. And again, for a person who is already saying that their relationship with this person will never be a high enough priority because he's never seen people be monogamous, you don't have the foundation to even want to do that. So why are we here? Like, I don't, like, it's pissing me off. You know, you can stay single. Speaking of which, I had just watched, um, I was thinking about doing a video on it, but I don't think, you know, viral things come and go so quickly. I don't even know if I'll have time to really do a video on it, but I did see the who the f did I marry 50 part saga on TikTok, not to spoil anything, but when she got to the part about where she asked him like, why did you marry me? And his answer, I'm not gonna spoil it. I just learned that a lot of you are mentally ill because you would think no rational person would do this shit but a lot of you are not rational <laughs> and, it, and it's and it's mm. chelsea meets jimmy's friends and they're both women i know a lot of people will feel like that's something you know ooh, something to be worried about i feel like uh that's a shame <laughs> that people think that uh, you can't be friends in a non-sexual relationship, men and women. How sad. They end up talking again over sharing because I'm sure production makes them do it. They talk about the clingy comment, which is funny because his friends are like, he called you a clinger? He's a stage five clinger himself. He'd be crying because, you know, she didn't give me a kiss on the cheek today or some shit like that. So he calling you clingy? And honestly, he'd probably think you hate him if you weren't clingy. You should just not talk to him for four hours. And he's like, babe, did I do something wrong? I've noticed this, but like, I'm... Not dating per se, but I'm talking to people. I'm meeting people. Um, however they fit, they fit. If they don't, they don't. It's great. But because this particular stage of my dating life is very casual, not even in like a, oh, I'm just living free. It's just casual. I don't put a lot of weight <laughs> into anybody that I've been talking to. I don't put any like real expectations on it. I don't find myself like hyper fixated on when people text me, which is a great feeling by the way, as a person who used to be like, oh, he has a text me back, oh, I don't do that shit, that's exhausting. But one of the <laughs> weird, funny responses I've noticed is that I've had a lot of men uh, in recent like interactions that I've like met people off of apps or whatever. They kind of text me a preemptive apology. <laughs> like, I'm sorry if blah, 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 blah. I've had several men do this now. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I understand it as like, I forgot to respond to them. So they thought I was upset at them. And I'm like, no, I just got busy and I have ADHD. <laughs> so it's like fascinating. There's a lot of, a lot of men are like that though. Uh, like, I just want my space. I don't want people to be like, and God forbid you aren't under sniffing under their ball sack. They're like, do you hate me? The question of him having close female friends does come up. They were like, are you comfortable with that? How do you feel about that? And she was like, admittedly, I was a little worried about it at first, um, but also I have no right to say anything. Like I have close guy friends. One of my close guy friends I've dated. Um, we were just better off as friends. So I don't have any space to tell him to like get rid of his friends, especially cause y'all knew him before he knew me. Like, you know, I have dated guys and they've had 
female best friends and every single one of them have cheated on me with said female best friends. But again, I can't really stop him from being friends with people. And it's like, yeah, you can't. <laughs> that that also explains a lot of her like insecurities around like who Jimmy's talking to, blah, blah, blah. Which again, I feel like she's insecure, but I don't think she's completely wrong when it comes to Jimmy. That's all I'm saying. Amy meets Johnny's people and that goes really well. So that's great. Laura and Jeremy uh, cap off the episode. And the last we'd seen them, they were in a good place. No, they were cool, right? They had met her parents and like they were jokey, jokey. He made a good impression. They liked him, you know, whatever thing. So this like very strong, like awkward energy. They're not talking. Maybe a little The body language is giving kind of like frustrated both of them. Something's apparently happened off camera. He had actually left out the night before at 10.45 p.m. and did not come back until 5 a.m. And there was nothing to account for that three hours between the bar closing and him coming home at 5 a.m. He's like, well, I went out with the guys with the pods, which I assume she knew. We were gonna go one place and then we had a change of plans. And one of the guys from the pods texted me saying, just so you know, Sarah, the other woman is gonna be there. He's like, I considered driving back home, but then I was like, I don't wanna have to change my entire life because somebody's gonna be there. Like what, I'm not gonna change what I was gonna do just cause someone's gonna be there. So I went anyway. While there, Sarah Ann comes up to me and she's like, oh, hi, Jeremy. From what I understand, maybe a bit passive aggressive. And he's like, what is that? What's going on there? And so we had a conversation. That's what happened. He's like, I gave you my location. If I had something to hide, I wouldn't give you my location. It's like, there's so many trigger, there's so many different men triggering me. <laughs> I'm thinking of so many different men I've talked to in the past. And it's like, <laughs> like all y'all. He's like, I gave you my location. Like, why would I lie to you? I gave you my location. I have so many issues because one, you have not shut things down with Sarah Ann. She came to you and you could have shut that down right there. Like, thank you. I appreciated getting to know you. I'm with my fiance. I would appreciate that you not cross over that line again. That's not appropriate, but you did not shut that down. You liked it and you kept things open. That's why I do believe that you've been talking to her. You were gone. You were unaccounted for for three hours. And you just want me to expect that the person that, another person that you were really into, y'all just had a nice conversation for three hours. That's what you want me to believe. Also, you send me your location. I don't want to be in no relationship that I got to stay up in the middle of the night to watch where you go on location. Like, I don't, I, if I need that type of assurance from you, I don't want to do this shit. I'm supposed to meet your mama today and I'm supposed to be like, oh, I'm so in love with this man. And I don't even know if I want to know you right now. Like, really, I was asleep. I'm not going to stay up all night looking to see where you were. So where were you? And he's like, I was in the parking lot of the bar. No, you weren't. I'm not denying anything. You're denying leaving the bar. I don't want to talk about that right this second. You don't want to talk about it this second. No. Don't share your fucking location if That's you don't bullshit. check it at 5 a.m. That's bullshit. Great. There's lost and found, then there's an alley that cuts back there. You weren't even in South End. You were north of Uptown, which is where Sarah Ann lives. This is good, I like this. Laura lied and said she didn't see where he went, but she followed him to go up to where, she, where Sarah Ann was. So she caught him in a lie. Psychic again. I told y'all he was a liar, so liars don't strike me as confusing when they're cheaters as well, possibly. But that is the end of episode nine, and that is the end of these three episodes, baby. There's a lot of cheaters this, uh, or cheat adjacent feels kind of icky, cheater-ish. There's a lot in that area happening this season, and it is getting icky. Oh, <laughs> bitch, you don't even know. <laughs> hey, y'all. This is several days post filming that video and my lips are hella dry. And there have been some updates, <laughs> some very crucial updates. Um, and I'm just gonna preface by saying, I think we should pack it in Netflix. I think this show has run its course. So there have been three major stories that have come out in the span of like two days. And I'm here to disappoint a lot of people. Our favorite big boy, Trevor, is a liar, allegedly. Now, I know everyone was sending me like DMs because every season I like a guy and then they're like, your guy ended up being terrible. But honestly, I haven't put any emotional weight in any man since SK. So I assume there's always a part of me that's like, eh, he's probably gonna be not shit. And then after I uploaded last week's video, I saw a clip of Trevor on his like TikTok or something, just walking on the beach and something about that gave me the ick. 
So when I found out that he's actually really icky, it actually didn't surprise me that much. And I, again, I don't put any weight, emotional weight in men uh, these days. So Trevor's a bitch in case you wanted to know. You want to know how? Russet, Russet is sniffing. <laughs> My dog is sniffing the camera. She's like, what? I want to be in on it. So apparently, <laughs> so apparently Trevor was in a serious relationship to a woman prior to going into the show and they had decided together that he would go on the show and pretend to be in love with somebody, get up to the marriage point and then not get married for clout of some sort. Maybe to, he's a fitness guy. Uh, maybe he was trying to springboard a fitness influencer career and text messages of him planning with his uh, now ex has gone live and apparently two weeks before the show aired, he ghosted her, well, attempted to ghost her and break up. So I guess maybe as an act of revenge or frustration, she put up the screenshots of them planning for him to go. So the ex-girlfriend went to her IG stories to answer some of the questions that we have. I'm not saying she's lying, but she also outed herself as someone that agreed to plan and scheme with him while he was on Love is Blind. And apparently he also filmed the perfect match too. And they were still together for that as well. Honestly, it doesn't make you look too great either. Honestly feels like she's outing this information because they broke up because you were cool with it through two shows. <laughs> It doesn't make her look as sympathetic, I think, as it yeah, she thinks it does. But And allegedly, she claims that he threatened her by um, threatening to release intimate videos of her. She gives me off energy, and I hate to say that, but she gives me theatrical, this is my time energy, and it's just off-putting. I don't really know where to start here. And I know people have a lot of questions. And I am scared shitless but I want to be transparent about my side of things. So I'm gonna let you guys ask some questions. But there's that. Honestly, you both some wackadoodles to me, so anyway. I really don't understand people who go on shows like this for clout. There's so many shows you could have went on, so many things you could have did to just be a clout chaser, so many less icky things that you could do or just icky in a way that doesn't involve your relationship so that we find out you're a lying scumbag. It's just weird. It's just weird. Two. Jeremy is also a cheater, but more so than we knew on the show, allegedly. <laughs> Apparently, when applying for the show, he was engaged to another woman who has kids. It was very funny because the pictures were posted on like a Love is Blind Facebook message board by the mother of that woman. People were like, where did you get these photos? She was like, in my phone. <laughs> So he had applied to be on the show while engaged to another, again, engaged, if I'm not mistaken, to another woman, got on the show, and then cheated on the show too. Jeremy has since come back and claimed it's not true, I'm sure. One, anybody that I was on dates with, my castmates, and in multiple interviews, this topic was discussed. Nobody is surprised by this. It was something that was well documented. Unfortunately, with all of the footage that is captured, not all of it makes it into the final cut. This just happened to not make it in there. Two, I did not apply for this while I was living with anybody else. I was out living on my own. I didn't seek this out. I was actually reached out to over Instagram. I'll actually add that message into the next slide just for some verification on that. But I had already been out on my own for a number of weeks at that point. I was asked if I would like to have a discussion around it. I said, sure, why not? Obviously, it ended up leading up to the show at some point but I, I did note his one word choice of like i was not living with someone else but that doesn't mean you weren't engaged to someone else and three one that genuinely shocked me this one i did not see coming on facebook again kenneth was outed by his cousin allegedly and this is bad in so many ways. Obviously, Kenneth did a terrible thing. Why did you do this? Why did you do this? But also maybe he's struggling with the sexuality and one of the issues that can come along with that is in an effort to deny who you are, you may end up dragging people in along the way. I get it. He's in a very religious space as well. That would make more sense because originally I was like, maybe he's just not into white women. Maybe he's just not into women, which would also make sense in the context. I don't know. However, comma, that's really f***ed up and you almost 
you may have married a person knowing that you would never be able to give any energy, any of that intimacy towards them. But with that said, if that is true, that your cousin just outed you on Facebook, that's a up cousin. What type of cousin is that? He in the South, gay. He's a principal, working around children. They will hurt him. What is wrong with you? Baby, he in a Carolina. I don't know if Kenneth has addressed that at all, but I did see a trailer for the uh, reunion, which apparently is taking place on the 12th. Don't quote me on that. The thing that is important is that it's going to feature a bunch of questions from the audience for that reunion specifically. And being that all y'all tears getting aired out before the season's over, what type of background checks are you motherfuckers doing? If you search on Facebook, you see a picture, bitch. I'm starting to wonder, like, are they doing background checks at all? Do they care to? Are they just trying to make the messiest show possible? As opposed to people who are going in trying to find love. Honestly, if we as the audience keep clocking the tea before the season's over, what's the point of doing the show? So again, I want to know what your opinions are of everything happening this season so far. Again, check out the first half. If you haven't, you should have watched all the way through. <laughs> um, If you want to check out other videos I've done about Love is Blind, I also have a playlist so you can check that out. It'll be linked somewhere, either down below and or up above somewhere. I will not have a Love is Blind video next week. I assume it's going to be episode 10 and maybe 11 will be the weddings. Cause they still haven't done the big, like meeting all the people that you could have dated. Like they didn't do that yet. So I assume there's going to be two ish episodes next week. And then maybe a reunion after that. So we'll see. I don't plan to do a love is mine video next week. Uh, you'll know when a video is uploaded. So there you go. So feel free to subscribe. If you want to keep up with that, follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter both of which are Kenny JD. Feel free to watch my podcast with Sean Pegas. Uh, we were just at All Stars, All Star Weekend. I say stars, maybe. Yeah, like this video, feel free to like this video and I'll see you guys next time.